we don't know exactly what causes ME-CFS, but we do know some facts and prominent theories about it. One of them being that the body gets into some kind of hypometabolic state, almost like hibernation. In fact, it's most similar to something in worms called dour, which is a hypometabolic state caused um, by environmental stresses like lack of access to food where the body of that worm will go into that state as a protective mechanism lower metabolism less need for calories in our case of course um, we don't lack food but the hypometabolic state is probably protective against something else be that the body is metaphorically cooling off the engine um, because the engine is overheating. And what I mean by that is that it's in response to oxidative radicals, oxidative stress, free radicals caused by any kind of environmental stressor or infection or inflammation that in response to that the body lowers oxidative metabolism um, and kind of metaphorically cools itself um, and sometimes literally actually a bit that the temperature is lower in this disease. So this comes at the cost of quality of life, but it may preserve the quantity of life. And this is what I mean when I say we are living in a state of mere survival and not really thriving. Our bodies are literally in a hypometabolic state, and that may save our life, but it doesn't mean quality of life. It also makes me think a lot about time. We experience time geologically, and it makes me think about the space and shape of time. The state is much harder to get out of than to fall into. It's like falling into a vortex. It's like falling into some kind of trap, in fact, or feedback loop. Like, in one theory, it's called the metabolic trap, and that the body gets easily stuck in this metabolic feedback loop caused by an initial stressor that's much harder to break out of than to break into. Regardless of the specific science, this is this horrible state that one kind of more easily falls into than falls out of, and it makes me think of the shape of a vortex or a gyre or a whirlpool, and it makes me think also of the idea of sort of with a horrible acceleration and noise and heat of extreme capitalist modernity that I always wanted to find a way to slow or stop time and for a lot of reasons and to escape from it into some kind of protective vortex or um, tesseract or folded piece of space-time and so maybe through music or art or meditation is one way to do that it's just some thoughts I had on vortexes and gyres and traps and feedback loops and I don't know exactly how to find these things, but I'd like to.